Hi, I'm now going to attempt to uh, replace this uh, blade on this uh, Makita uh, rechargeable uh, hedge trimmer. Uh, it's quite a heavy duty one and it's uh, proved to be very good but unfortunately I hit a quarter inch 4mm lump of uh, steel a few times in somebody's flower border and uh, it didn't do the uh, little blade at the end much good. So what we're going to do now is to turn it over so as we can get at the uh, appropriate parts to uh, swap the blades over. <coughs> I'm not sure that you can see what I'm pointing at the end there is that blade. That section of the blade there is all broken off. So now we're going to so we turn this over and we're going to try and uh, take this one apart and put the new one on in its place. So the main thing is to read the instructions first, then probably reread them again, and then have a go at doing it. Uh, but also, sometimes, especially these days with modern technology and cameras, pays almost to take a photograph of the bits when you take them apart, and then uh, when you're putting it back together, hopefully it'll uh, make it a bit easier for you. When you unpack the box with a new blade in, new blade, whoopee whoopee. Don't forget to uh, make sure you've got these two little bits and pieces, don't throw them away with the packaging. And also make sure you've got the instructions and as I say that you've read them thoroughly. As we're working on the back side for want of a better word of the or the underside of the hedge trim attachment, you'll possibly notice that I've turned the new hedge trim trimmer attachment uh, upside down as well so it's at least they're both in the same orientation and hopefully they mean I shall put them back together correctly. Also if you've got uh, the ability to you know, home in a bit or zoom in on your camera a bit more you'll see where the breakage is here in relation to the new one over there. It's all gone from that area. Oh, here we go. Remember that the viewfinder and the camera work back to front. Interestingly, the one recommendation on this is to put the uh, the guard over the blade when you start to take it apart, which makes a great deal of sense. It protects your fingers, particularly if you're filming and you haven't got your gloves on. I would normally use my Allen keys, but as I've got my little goodie box from uh, Bosch, uh, I'm just going to use one of these X and put my little or smaller of my uh, rechargeable drills on a low torque setting the low number and then it hopefully won't burn off the uh, the uh, little bolt screws whatever they are that go into the uh, edge trimmer attachment the number three hex uh, attachment into this clever little adapter piece which means i can keep swapping the heads over without having to keep adjusting the drill I've put the uh, setting on the drill onto low, onto speed number one. And at the moment I put it on a torque of four, so hopefully that will be okay, but we'll just have to suck it and see what happens. So I'm now going to take out one, two, three, four, five, six of those little uh, screw bolts. The torque setting at number four wasn't uh, strong enough, so I've had to turn it up to number twelve. This is where a little sawsaw tray comes in handy to be able to put all the little nuts and bolts that come off. So I've now taken four out, I'm just going to take these last two out here. Just gently, gently, because as I say, we don't want to burr off these the bolts, because I imagine they'd be quite expensive to, uh, to replace, but a lot quicker than doing it with the uh, Allen key. Now that should be ready to just lift off. So, let's lift that bit off. So nice and gungy underneath. Um, so, a little bit knocked up. Anyway, we'll just have to... Uh, that's what the inside looks like. Mm. Now just follow the instructions on the instruction sheet. I'm now taking all the bits off in sequence and actually putting them back in sequence into the uh, cover. So hopefully 
should make it easier to put them back. So, so far we've taken off this collection of bits, leaving this collection of bits in here still. Now the next thing we're going to do is to undo one, two, those bolts. We just need a uh, sort of different uh, uh, key for that and then we'll take out that uh, little uh, wadding there which uh, probably stops a lot of the uh, muck getting in from the uh, conifer hedges etc etc whatever you're cutting. There's a bit of grease around here. Um, hopefully there'll be enough left for it to all go back together without me needing to put much else in. But uh, no doubt a professional who knows what he's doing would add a bit more of the appropriate grease. With these two uh, bolts I've uh, had to put the uh, drill driver up to its uh, screwdriver setting. That seems to have worked, well, that's the okay. Remember those two little spaces that I told you not to lose earlier on in the proceedings? Well, I found out where those go now, so they go into there. So, make sure we don't lose those, but if we do, we've got two spares. Those are coming out quite nicely. Remember to keep the washers in the right places and then it's easier when you put them back. Also note where this uh, sticky uppy bit is here because that sticky uppy bit will be critical to when we put the new blade on. And this little wadding we're going to take out in a second as well. That we'll need to keep that because it'll protect the... Uh, uh, protect the... all this little area in here from getting uh, all the dodgy bits of conifer etc etc in there. So I'm now up there. So having now taken that apart uh, I found another little gasket here which is this uh, black gasket around the edge which looks not well, supposed to be like that or not but it looks as if it suffered some trauma um, with me using the, uh, the hedge trimmer while it was still slightly broken. It may have broken these but hopefully those will be okay and they'll go back fine. We've kept that little Bit of a, there we are, that will go back in to that position on top of the blade eventually. So now I think the idea is that there's this clever little diagram here which shows the uh, cover coming off, but I think the idea is that the cover comes off the old blade and now goes on to the new blade, which we've cunningly put previously upside down. Don't mind we're working from the bottom of the edge trimmer. where we are. That's where the motor is under there, just so you know. We've now put the uh, cover, taking off the old blade and put it onto the new blade, just leaving exposed the bit that has to be fitted into here. So uh, that then protects your fingers from the blade, I guess, which is a good idea. Will make some sort of sense. So, uh, Make sure you've got this uh, little ring forward that way, um, so as that the opposite side of that one fits into the uh, little hole in the end of this little ring, so it's a bit like a spyglass. Make sure you've got your spacers in, and then we'll put our two bolts in, and make sure you've got your wadding pad in. You need to put that onto the blade before you put it in here, because otherwise it's a little with a couple of grooves in it, it won't sit probably very well. But now that seems to be sitting okay. Now just put the uh, this uh, big cog in, just got to make sure you just wiggle it slightly so that it's uh, nesting with that little, what looked like a, uh, a spyglass at the bottom. And then it should engage with that little bit there. And that's all sitting nicely, it's all pretty well flush with the top of there, so that's all good. I might just uh, I'll tighten these up with the uh, electric uh, screwdriver, but I might just tighten these up with the Allen key now just to be on the safe side, just to make sure they don't drop off. Now just put this uh, spyglass arrangement and uh, this little running what that is, band where there's got little teeth on that little black bit there and they just all sit nice and comfortably in there and I 
rightly or wrongly, I've just had to turn that round just slightly so as they uh, get that to uh, latch onto that. But it may be that uh, it's just a matter of moving the blade gently out until it fits into position. That's all we need now to put the uh, outer casing. There's another, as I said, a little layer here, this bit here to go on first, and then the plastic casing. I say plastic, yeah, it is plastic on top of that. We'll put this uh, metal arrangement on the top now, just to make sure it's carefully uh, aligned. And then we're ready for the casing. I just think I've just found out what the extra screw was on that casing. I'll show you that in a minute if I remember. Now I'll put the uh, six screws loosely in. I'll do those up with the electric uh, screwdriver gently. And uh, then I'll just probably finish them off with the uh, Allen key. This extra one here, which I couldn't understand what that was for, originally so there was no need to take that one out which I didn't but I think that's probably just um, uh, a little hole to put some of the uh, the grease into the uh, into this sort of gearbox mechanism gear mechanism so I've just used my uh, trusty allen keys just to give those a final tweak uh, they were very tight already but just just checking them up to be fine and uh, ideally if we've got uh, some of you special grease, which I don't quite know what grease you use in these things, so I'm not an expert. Um, so I haven't bothered, hopefully there's enough left in there, I haven't taken any out. So hopefully there should be enough to keep it going for a while longer. But I guess, that, I imagine that that hole there where the screw is pulled is, the reason that comes out, I assume that's where the grease would go in, but I'm not sure. I think the key to it is to read the instructions uh, and to uh, maintain the sort of systematic order of how you take things off and how you put them together again then hopefully you should be all right as you can probably see i've been using this upside down the whole time and that seems to have worked uh, fine and uh, it is very sensible to keep this cover on which is obviously what they've recommended and it does protect your hands from the uh, sharp blades was a good piece of advice. So hopefully you can see that seems to work okay. I'll probably just spray a bit of uh, um, whatever it is. What it's called now? Spray. Yeah, I'll just spray a bit of the old uh, GT85 or similar onto the blades just to keep them lubricated and get rid of some of the resin from the conifer bits and pieces that you cut. The key is to follow the instructions and uh, hopefully you shouldn't have any problems. If it doesn't fit together easily or properly, seek uh, expert advice. Uh, but as long as it works, if it for any reason it starts uh, jumping about or vibrating or whatever, it probably means you've got it back together wrongly. So uh, stop it and, as I say, seek professional advice. But I, you've never done this before and I've just uh, followed the instructions with the, which came from Makita and that seems to work for me, so hopefully it will work for you too.